Now this is the um, this is the <clears throat> newest of the poems I'm reading, and, and uh, apart from that one in regress, um, this is the one I've been started most recently and still trying to uh, finish. But <clears throat> I made some progress today, and so I like to read it. Um, I always write with a, a fountain pen and uh, then type afterwards. Uh, and so sometimes I actually spend uh, 10 hours sitting with this fountain pen in my hand. And I realize I've been, I've been uh, most of my writing life, you know, I've been trying to write about this thing or that thing far away. And, uh, and uh, there was that pen in my hand. So I've written a poem about the pen called The Pen. <laughs> and uh, ichor, as perhaps not everyone knows, is that fluid that runs in the veins of the gods in place of blood. <clears throat> the pen. Basically, its work is to memorize. It scratches words onto the paper, engraving them, and fills them with pulverized mur murex to emboss them. When its top is on, the pen sleeps, dreaming of paper made from softwood pulp whose stink has been let out over various small towns in Maine and Oregon. <laughs> at, high pressure, at high altitudes, a feeling of pressure comes into the pen, swelling the ink sac, and much like a boy, dreaming of Grace Hamilton who sits in front of him in the sixth grade, the pen experiences a spontaneous exodus of ink. <laughs> An old pen with atrophied ink sac gives up ink only after much forethought and in limited quantities. <laughs> ink contains the entire range of sounds the human voice apparatus is capable of, which the little child, waking early, practices, not yet knowing which language she will speak. At the bottom of the ink sac drift ancient creatures of high density and no etymology. Stone, fire, moon. These are the fallen angel words. Ink is their ichor. They have a mineral glint given by knowing, even in hell. In our system of writing, we move sideways, but also go backwards and downwards. These directions are good for remembering and introspection. The pen, the pen is the mom back, the one who gets out of the truck and goes to the rear and waves to the driver and calls, mom back, mom back. <laughs> Sometimes in releasing its ink, the pen, like the cuttlefish, may only make matters murkier. For instance, by writing words one after the other, it may imply that reality happens one event after another. Also, by letting us name things, it tempts us to assume we understand them, raising ignorance to the status of knowledge, as in, what happened to your pa? He died. Oh, so that was it then. When my father died, leaving my mother and me alone in the house, I don't know even now what happened. I wonder what Rilke felt on the death of his father, who was by then little more than a speck in the distance. Did, did his mother become larger, the smaller his father became? Maybe his wife, too, soon became a speck. He assured her in letters that it would help their spiritual development for them to see very little of each other, meanwhile welcoming women who came from all over Europe, hoping to be his lovers forever, to spend their allotted number of nights in his bed. I called it my work when I would spend weeks on the road, often in the beds of others. <coughs> this ideal pen made of hardened rubber before the invention of plastic is more righteous than my other pens and seems to take any oppor opportunity to bring up the deep confusions of my younger days. Fortunately, pens run out of ink. <laughs> Francois Villon, living before they put antifreeze in ink, brought Le Lai to a timely close when, at the ninth hour, his candle blew out and his inkwell froze. I couldn't have found any fire, 
he wrote, so I fell asleep bundled in rags. It was an almost cheerful sight the other day when from a body bundled in rags in a doorway, a vigorous stream started and made it all the way across the sidewalk to the gutter. Like a camel at an oasis, the pen thrusts itself down to its ears into the inkwell and suctions in silence. Then it sets out again, treading its marks filled with shadow across the white paper. Yesterday, when I was trying, when I tried to write about my sister Wendy, who had been my little mother when we were children, I couldn't find the words in the waterman's ink. Then I had a visit from Anne B., who talked about being a widow, and she said she was stuck in her writing and had lost her way, and the tumbling forth of her words made me want to take a spoon and catch the mascara blackened fluid on her cheeks and mix it into my ink. When she had left, and I went back to trying to write about Wendy, it seemed the waterman's ink had replenished its vocabulary and from the street outside my window came cries of, Mom back, Mom back. 